Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about something really exciting that's going to piss off a lot of people, and that's cables, interconnect cables specifically, or RCA cables as some of you may know them. Before you hit that thumbs down button because you're a cable denier, stay with me. You might like what I have to say and you might find we have more, more in common than not. So, in the, in the speaker cable category, or all just all cables in general, it seems like there's one of two kinds of people. Cable denier, someone who says cables do nothing, lamp cord is the same, you can you know roll up aluminum foil and press it into a cable, plug it in to your interconnects, it's the same, it just doesn't matter. Cool, no problem, I respect your belief. There's another kind of person that believe cables make a really big difference. Cool, good for you, I respect your belief too. I am neither. My belief is somewhat more reasonable. Of course, I think my idea is the best. It comes from my own mind, and I don't know about you guys, but I trust my own brain and my thoughts the most. Um, what I believe is that cables can make a slight difference, and it kind of makes sense that they do. Some of them are made differently. Some, some of them have different connectors on the ends, different cables, different shielding, and those things could have some kind of impact, different lengths and so on. Um, I don't believe cables can make a huge difference. I don't think uh, if you're sound system has like a crappy sound stage that a cable can give you like boom like sound stage like you never had before if you have crappy bass i don't think a cable can give you like the best bass you've ever heard um most of my listening impressions have told me that the changes between cables are actually quite slight and for those of you that want like scientific evidence and stuff like that i can't give you that but what i can tell you is the methodology i used and maybe you'll think it's somewhat scientific of course it is not the most scientific, but what I did is I plugged in each cable, I listened to it for about one to two days, and I took some notes. Then I moved on to the next cable and I did the same thing. Then I put everything aside and about a week later I did the same thing again. I took a new set of notes without looking at my old set of notes, and the whole point was to see if I would come to the same conclusion. Now, my memory's not that good, so if you're thinking I just remembered and wrote the same thing, you're wrong, I promise you. But I did come to the same conclusion on most cables. I wrote those down on these note cards here, and we're going to talk about them. I'm not going to get into too much the differences because all of these cables are more similar than different. Most cables are more similar than different, in my opinion. And these differences are minor, but they are worth mentioning. Um, I'm going to tell you one aesthetic thing about each cable, what it's made out of, what it costs, and maybe two to three listening impressions. This isn't a deep dive into cables. Now, if you already have your own belief in cables and nothing I say is gonna make you believe that cables do anything, no problem, dude. Go on your merry way. Don't leave a nasty comment. Don't give me a thumbs down. Just go on your merry way and be happy. This is for the people that are unsure. I myself was somewhat unsure. I made a cable video about a year and a half ago and I was curious to see if I still believed the same thing. A year and a half ago, I said I thought cables made a small difference. I've upgraded my system a lot. I wanted to see if that was still the case. Guess what? For me, it was. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Furutech Alpha Line 1. It's right here. It's got a locking uh, interconnect. And of all the locking cables, uh, it is the best in terms of its functionality. It's a true lefty, loosey, righty, tighty scenario. So you always know which way to turn it to plug it and unplug it. It never slipped on the... Uh, female RCA terminal. And if I didn't say it already, it's $78. So the listening, listening impressions on it is the top end sparkle is a bit rounded off, so it's a little bit smooth. And that's compared to my Analysis Plus Oval 1. Did have good detail, and it was brighter than the OIDE cable that we're, we're going to talk about and the Mozart 2 cable. It did have excellent micro detail, and it's built out of Ono Continuous Cast Copper. Now, keep in mind, when I say it was excellent at this or good at that, we're still talking about really small differences. And that's why if you're a cable denier, I don't blame you. I'm not surprised some people can't hear a difference. I had to listen for a couple days to hear these differences and just like critically listen, not just kick back and listen. This was kind of a stressful and really annoying video to make. I spent a few hundred dollars on, of my own money on it too. So if you don't care for it, it's cool. Please just don't give me crap in the comments. I have a full-time job, I don't have time for it. Next cable we're gonna talk about is the OIDE PA02TR. For those of you that think I might be biased, I want you to know I wanted this cable to be the best. It was the most expensive at $132, and I like the soft purple look. 
I thought it was cool. Oide is a Japanese company. I like Japanese stuff. Psychologically, I just wanted this one to be a winner if there is such a thing. It turned out to not be so much. This was my least favorite for a few reasons. One, the connector is among the worst. It's not a locking design, um, but there's there's no like tactile feedback when you plug it in. It doesn't go over the female RCA terminal very much at all. And you're left feeling as if you haven't pushed it in all the way, even though you have, and it's very frustrating to use. Um, it is what it is. I'm gonna tell you a few of its listening impressions. So, um, smoothest top end of all the cables, and I'll say too smooth. Um, detail can lack edge at times. Base is also smooth, but it had some texture to it still. That's all I got. The next one we're gonna talk about is the Ram Audio Mozart 2. That's this one right here. It's a black and gold cable, and I would say this is the most high-end looking cable. If aesthetics are your thing, this is a good looking cable. The black and gold has just always been a classy thing. Um, they've got this like addition here with their company logo with like a gold foil, some directional arrows, or that could just be uh, uh, like a style choice, I'm not sure. And this is a locking design also. Um, so let me tell you about this one. It had a slight mid-range tilt in the female vocal region that seemed to bring like a sense of scale and life to the presentation. Again, these are minor, right? Uh, very good separation, and overall it was very open and balanced sounding. When I say that is, not a whole lot stuck out to me. It just sounded good. Um, if that's kind of what you're looking for in a cable, just something that's built well, looks good, good quality, reasonable price, at 129 bucks, the Mozart 2 might be for you. It is also built of Ono Continuous Cast Copper. So far, all three of these cables are Ono Continuous Cast Copper. And I'll be honest, they had more similarities than differences. Next, we're gonna move on to the Analysis Plus Oval One. This is the cable that I've been using in my system for about two years now. And this is the six foot variant. So far, all the ones I've showed you so far are one meter. The one that I used for the test was also one meter. That's just plugged in right now and it didn't feel like dismantling my system. So I grabbed this spare one that I use for my subwoofer. This is a non-locking terminal or, or connector, sorry. And it is among the most pleasurable and pleasing to use. It's got a positive tactile feel uh, when, when you plug it and unplug it. Um, you know exactly uh, like like when you've done it, and, and it's just great. It's great. I love it. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what it sounds like. So it's going to add the most sharpness and distinction in the top end. Base is going to be a touch on the thin side compared to all other cables, and the design is a hollow oval. It's made out of copper. Why do I use this cable in my system and not any of the others, even though I spent money on all of them? Well, my speakers are pretty smooth already. I don't need a cable that's going to make them more smooth. My speakers have a ton of bass already. I don't need a, a cable that's gonna give them more bass. The Analysis Plus actually lightens up the bass a little bit, which I can afford. I can give up some bass, no problem, I got tons of it. And it gives me a little bit of sharpness and distinction on the top end, something I could use. So it's a nice difference. Now, if you were to come to my home and swap out that cable for something else, it would take me quite some time to notice. Cause again, these changes, they're very minor. I don't recommend cables be something you upgrade in the hopes of a big change. To me, it's something I started doing after I had spent money on everything I already wanted, had a few hundred bucks burning a hole in my pocket, and I'll be honest, I wanted my system just to look cooler, and cables, nice cables look cool. That's what got me started on the cable journey. The next one we're gonna talk about is the Maze Audio Rough 4. This has a very unique look. It's, uh, oh, by the way, sorry, the Analysis Plus, about $100 a cable. This Maze uh, Rough 4 is about 120 or 110, sorry, per, uh, one meter. It's got a unique look. Uh, it's a four conductor cable. It uses four 18 gauge uh, quad braided wires. It is a locking design. And I'm going to tell you about it. So uh, aesthetically unique look. As I said, bass has more slam and edge than any other cable. Uh, vocals didn't pop as hard versus others, especially the Mozart 2. And the top end had more edge than all other cables, but less than the Analysis Plus cable. So this is not, this is a cable I really like the look of. I use Maze Audio Ref 4 power cables, so I really wanted to use their interconnects for my uh, preamp to my monoblock and then from my streamer to my preamp, just to have this really cool uniform look. But what they did was give me more bass. And while they did give that edge up top that I needed, 
I didn't need any extra bass, honestly, at all. And it was like just enough of a change that it was too much. And it actually made integrating my mains to my subwoofer like a little bit complicated. It took me a while to actually figure that out. And I was pretty shocked to discover that was the case. I remember I unplugged the maze cables. Um, I plugged the Analysis Plus back in and my sub integrated way better because I wasn't running into that issue where the bass from the mains and the bass from the sub were canceling each other out. Sure, I get it. If you're bass head, you know, I could have adjusted other things to make up for that. But the, at the end of the day, I didn't need any extra bass in my mains, so I don't use the Maze Audio Ref for interconnect anymore. I think it is one that a lot of people will be happy with. I know a lot of people are bass heads and want more bass out of their bookshelf speakers. But let me be clear. If you think adding this interconnect to your system is going to turn your main speakers into a subwoofer, you're not listening. These changes are minor, very minor. So minor, in fact, some people will not even notice. So depends on your room, your ears, your associated equipment. You know what I mean? All that stuff. Spend the money if you like the look and you've already upgraded everything else. If you've got other stuff to buy, cables should be last. I don't really have much else to say on the topic. And if you think I'm a heretic, I don't know what to tell you. This is my hobby, I do it my way, and I'm happy. And I'm happy as long as you're happy doing it your way. Just don't try to force me to believe what you believe, and I'm not gonna try to force you to believe what I believe. And until next time, later.